I want to thank everybody for joining us on this webinar, How to Win the Sponsorship Race. Um, my name is Lori Hockman. I'm the Marketing Coordinator here at Octria. And like I said today, I'm so happy to be joined by E.J. Steinberg. She is a professional nonprofit event coordinator with many years of experience helping groups just like yours maximize the fundraising event. And first, some housekeeping. This webinar is in listen-only mode because it is such a large group. However, we are interested in your participation. In the bottom right-hand corner, which I think you guys found, drop any questions or comments as we travel through the presentation. And at the end, we'll pull from that chat box for our questions and answers. So our goal today is to help fundraising groups make the most of, out of, out of, most out of their fundraiser. The webinar is part of an ongoing series to look out for additional topics. Look, we know you do all that work for the event fundraiser, but are you really maximizing the sponsorship component to boost, boost the event income? Do you ever ask yourself, can we make more money with the same effort? Let me tell you, AJ will tell you the answer is yes. And we're going to show you how to do it right here, right now. Just a quick overview of Octria. It was founded in 2011 as charity auction organizer. That may sound familiar if you've been hanging out with us for a while. We updated our name and logo to Octria in 2016. Like many awesome tools, the program was designed out of need. We too were tired of bid sheets, paper bid sheets, unorganized tracking, long cumbersome checkouts, there had to be a better way. So our founder brilliantly developed Octria from the ground up, taking into account the entire auction process and event process from the first donation to the last receipt and all the bidding in between. Since its inception, Octria has been used to run event fundraisers in over 28,000 auctions, 3.3 million bidders, 1.8 million items have helped Octria, um, Octria teams raise over $170 million. But still, every day is new and we're always appreciative of feedback, whether it's regarding our platform or webinars like this. All right, I, I want to stop you, Lori. Yes. There's some people who are saying they can't hear. Is Can you post oh. a, a phone number that they can call in for for some audio you guys thanks for hanging in sometimes it does take a little bit for us to get all the things all put together so if you can hear us yay and if you can't hear us i think Lori, are you able to place a uh, a phone number someplace that they can get it i can try and pull that up real quick the best way is to look on your email because it gives you a local yeah. number yeah, if they can't hear us, my Correct. guess is yes. they're not going to know that. <laughs> you know what? Let me type that in here. Okay, just to if see if we can do are, that. And there's that's pinned to the top. Having sound issues, please check your email for. Oh, and mute and, and unmute it because some of these were muted. So to say, or ah, unmute. Okay. Thank you so much, Mary. Mary <laughs> Case is the one who is, we love it. All right. I think, can I start since we want to make sure that we get everybody yeah. when they're doing it? All right, then. So here we go. I'm going to start this now. My name's AJ Steinberg and welcome <laughs> everybody. For those of you who don't know me, a lot of you do. A lot of you know me and Queen B, but I have been a professional nonprofit event producer for over 20 years. I'm based in beautiful Malibu, California, and I have done over a hundred successful events and raised millions of dollars for some amazing clients. And I've done uh, like hundreds of these auctions and done hundreds of sponsors and I am here today to give you all the stuff that I have learned over the past 20 years so that you can do this for your sponsors for your events. Now, the best thing about sitting on this webinar and the information I'm going to get to give to you is that it costs you no money whatsoever to implement all of these strategies. It has nothing to do with buying fancy bells and whistles. Sponsorship is just being smart. And I am going to show you today how you can be smart about it all. So let's get started and talk about how you are going to win the event sponsorship race. Do you want me to hold this to do the slides, Lori? 
Is that sure, okay? Go right ahead. All right. So here, first of all, I want to thank Empower, yes, Charity Sector Training and Consulting, Scott Lockie over there in Australia. Thank you so much for all of you joining us from New Zealand and Australia, and we appreciate him getting this webinar to you. So today, this is what we are going to be talking about on this webinar. I'm going to tell you exactly where sponsorship dollars come from. I'm going to teach you how to think like a marketing guru. I'll show you what an irresistible sponsorship deck is and how you can make one too. We'll talk about prospecting sponsors and how to outreach to them. We'll talk about how to treat those sponsors like royalty and keep the sponsor love flowing after your event is over. And that's a lot to put into just 45 minutes to an hour. So if I speak quickly, I'm sorry, but I have so much I want to tell you. So the first thing I want to tell you is where sponsorship dollars come from. Sometimes when I meet with clients, new clients, and they say, well, we should have this company sponsor us because we do good work in the community or we're doing great things for the world. But you know what? Sponsorship dollars, it's not like Santa Claus is just going to drop down the chimney and bring you a big bag of sponsorship dollars. And it's not like the Easter Bunny is going to leave sponsorship dollars in little eggs in your garden. No, those are myths that because you're doing good work and you're nice people, that sponsors are going to sign up. Because sponsorship dollars are marketing dollars. Folks, you are talking to businesses, not people. So start thinking of your sponsors as being businesses. And where the money comes for sponsorships is in their marketing budget. So if you have to talk to marketing people and if you have to make your case to businesses, you have to show them why your event is a good investment. We call that ROI, return on investment. They could invest in any, in any event that asked them to be a sponsor, but I'm going to show you how to make yours heads, heads above the others so that you get chosen. Now, Karen asked if this is going to be recorded so she can share it with her team. Absolutely, Karen. You'll be getting this, the uh, recording of this after the webinar is done. All right, so think of the companies. We're not talking to people about sponsorships. We're talking to companies, all right? So there's five reasons why they sponsor. The first one is relationship building and maintenance. This means you spend money with them. You are already a client of theirs. They're your bank. They're your insurance company. Maybe they own the building that you're in. They want to keep you happy because you give them money and they have a relationship with you. That is the one reason. Another is that public perception of altruism. They want to have their name associated with something that feels good. And so that's why they would sponsor. Another is positive association, and we call that whitewashing. If you're in an environmental group, you call it greenwashing, am I right? So say that there's Monsanto who did some terrible things to the environment. Well, if they want to make people think, hey, maybe Monsanto isn't so bad or whatever this company is, they will sponsor, say, an environmental event because they want to pretend nothing, the bad things they did didn't exist. It's called whitewashing. The next is they need to reach a target audience. Say it's an automobile dealership. They may want to sponsor your event because your target demographic is the um, your target demographic is who they want to see in their cars. And the last is sales potential, that by sponsoring you, they have the ability to get their product in the hands of the people at the event, either through sampling or through a gift certificate where the guests can actually go afterwards and, and use a gift certificate at their establishment to buy their item. That is the reason. So there are those five reasons that they sponsor, and it is very different than a board member or a supporter sponsoring. Board members sponsor it because they like you. And same thing with a supporter. But if you really are going to hit the jackpot with sponsorships, you have to look at companies. So companies want to know, hey, are you, your organization, and your event a good investment for us? Now, what would be a good investment to them? They want to know how many touches and views through marketing and media will they get? They want to know how long will you be marketing 
their low their sponsorship in, in accordance with your event and will they be hitting the right people their target market is super important to them so we will be talking about how you can make them feel confident that your event is the one to do in just a few minutes okay so part of this is if we're going to be talking to marketing departments we need to think like a marketing guru. We have to think like they do. And so what is marketing and seeing? You have to understand what you're trying to achieve, right? So yeah, AJ, of course. Marketing is the process or technique of promoting, selling, or distributing a product or service. Your product that you are trying to sell is your event. So you have to remember, your event has to be appealing, well-priced and have value, just like a can of Coca-Cola, just like a tin of Vegemite, am I right? So you have to figure out what is going to appeal and resonate with the marketing team. And I will tell you some ways to do this. Now, everybody look at the left side of your screen. Do not, under any circumstances, look at the right side, look at the left. This is where we run into problems, is you're underselling your event. Nobody wants to have bad return on their investment. They want to make sure they get the biggest impact for the money they invest in your event. So a lot of times, and I know you're going to nod your head and say, yes, we've done this. You'll say, your logo will be seen by 300 guests during the dinner loop at our event, right? That is a really common thing that people say. But if you're asking for a $10,000 sponsorship, they're thinking, okay, if it's only 300 guests, it's like, $33 a person, that's outrageously expensive in marketing terms. Or if it's a four hour event, it's like $2,500 an hour. That is not appealing to these marketing people. But if you take all that juicy social media and media releases and press and all the things you're gonna be giving to them throughout the entire lead up to your event, during your event and after your event, that is where you really can start building the impact of marketing with your event. So if you have, let's say you have a 1000 person email list, you can say to them, your company name and logo will be viewed over 10,000 times because you send out 10 email blasts. That's 10, 10 times 1,000. 10,000 times by loyal supporters through email, social media posts over a span of six months. At the event, your company name and logo will be integrated, blah, blah, blah. So as you see, Suddenly they're thinking, I'm not having 300 people see it for four hours. I'm having 10,000 views over a six month period. Which do you think is gonna to appeal to them, right? All right, so one of the things we also have to think about is what they're looking for. Because this is like when you go and you're trying to go on a new donor call, when you're cultivating a new donor, you know, there's things that they're looking for when they invest in your organization. It's the same thing when the corporations are looking to invest in your sponsorship. They're gonna look for marketing value. And that means like we just saw on the last slide, how many views will my logo get? How long a duration will it get? What is my marketing value? Then some of them are looking for face to face values. So it could be that an automobile manufacturer of high-end automobiles wants to get into your event so they can sit at a table with people who buy their kind of cars. They can also have their car there and people can look at their car. That has value. Now tickets and tables are typically what we've offered and I've got to tell you, not so much value to the marketing people. They can eat at a restaurant anywhere for less than a ticket to your event. So tickets and tables, though we've always put those first, and I'll show you a little bit more how you can get your sponsor picks, perks kind of boosted up, but they don't have much appeal. Just like when you talk to donors and start the cultivation process, don't be afraid to ask potential sponsors what they are looking for, what they want to achieve with the sponsorship and give them choices. That's one of the things that they really appreciate. Now this, everybody look on the left side, don't look on the right side. Here it is on the left-hand side. This was actually taken last year off the internet and this is actual sponsorship levels that were being offered in 2019, 2019 by some organization. And I feel sorry for them because I can't imagine they sold this out. Look at that. I mean, first of all, they're leading with four complimentary tables of 10 for a $20,000 sponsorship. Really? Do you really know any company that wants to send 40 people to your event? 
usually they don't even use your tickets, quite honestly, as we'd love them to. We'd love them to send all their executive level people to sit at the table and really get involved with your organization. But truthfully, 40 tickets, it's not going to happen. And if it did, it would probably be the sales clerk and the bank teller who's coming, not the decision makers. So these are old fashioned. They don't work. On the right hand side are, this is an actual sample of one of my clients of what they were offering as sponsorship perks. They were saying, we'll give you a branded cocktail hour. We'll give you step and repeat uh, logo placement. We will get you this and this and this. This is going to be a part of the slides when you get this afterwards, um, after this webinar is over, you can look at the slide and see what was offered. Or you can email me directly. I answer all my emails and I love to send you all my goodies. I will send you a sample of this, which is a, the sponsorship level perks. If you email me at AJ, at queenbeefundraising.com and I will send that to you. All right, so another thing you need to do and Lori is really good at this. Lori, do you wanna take this, this page because this is your special thing is giving them a dedicated website for your event. Sure, this makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're utilizing Octrio for the fundraising event, it allows you to create a dedicated event website. You can easily add your Google Analytics or your Google Tag Manager, which gives you the ability to collect that data, circle back to the sponsor with quantitative data, just like AJ talked about. So if you had an event in the past, you can tell them what happened in the past. And then post event, you can use that data to show them how valuable their investment was. We love to shine the light on the sp on the sponsors and they love seeing their logo and links on the website also. So when you're soliciting the sponsors, this is a great selling point. Also, when there's a few posted early, the potential sponsors can see what this will look like live. There's two ways to include sponsors on your dedicated website when you're utilizing Octria. There's a complete sponsor catalog or a sponsor row. And both are really um, helpful in differentiating between the sponsor levels and um, providing that visual for your bidders and donors and everybody else that's coming through on your website. So use the sponsor row to separate the high value sponsors and you can even include those in your header and footer on every page, upping that value while you're acting like a marketing guru. <laughs> Absolutely. So that packs a lot of wow and then the, they love that. Now I'm going to move on. We're going to move away from thinking like a marketing guru and I'm going to show you how you can create what I call an irresistible sponsorship deck. Now a sponsor deck is just a fancy name for a brochure. Now some of you are going to say, huh, AJ, you know, what about one page? You know, I heard we only needed one page for our sponsorship levels and that's all we needed to do. People don't read more. In a way that's true, but your one page is going to be your cover letter, whether it be an email with this irresistible sponsorship deck attached or you print out the sponsorship deck and you have a real live cover letter. But this is going to be something that impresses the heck out of these marketing people because they like nothing better than slick, fancy stuff. And this looks gorgeous and it isn't expensive to make. Um, anybody who is on this, you can go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A canva.com it's an online graphic program if you register as a as a charity you get a free subscription and you can make gorgeous flyers gorgeous brochures anything you want it's brilliant and i love it so much so i'm giving you a little hint uh deanne said canva's the best mary said canva's awesome <laughs> yay we love it of course it's awesome all right you guys so what you're going to see next is going to be one of my irresistible sponsorship decks. I've already given you my email address and I will again later, but I have about six samples I can send to you. So this is the sequencing that I use for my AJ irresistible sponsorship deck. Cuff, oh, it, oh, Canva was created by a Perth girl. I did not know that. Yay. I love that. See the little bit of tidbits. So these are the pages that I usually lay out in advance for my clients. And they choose which of these pages they want to include in their sponsorship deck. The most important things is you get the information 
into the hands of the marketing people or the corporations so they can make a good decision. This deck will have an identity page, which is the cover. It should talk about your org. It should just be a picture that has the branding of the event. I make my life easy. I take my save the date and you'll see it on the next slide. And I turn the cover. It's already made. I already had somebody who was a great graphic artist do it. I just make that as the cover page. Then the next page, I immediately give information about the cause and your organization and the event. Don't make them guess who you are and what you're doing. Next, I like to have highlights of the programs that you're providing because it's important for them to know a little bit about your organization and the great work you're doing in the world. Then, this is something that is often left out. I always love to get personal stories or testimonials for, of people who are being served by you, and I'll show you that in a second. Press clips, if you have them from past events, nothing's gonna impress a sponsor more than seeing press from other events and other sponsors who got great press from the event. So if you have that, you can put it in there. Testimonials from happy past sponsors, so important. If they see a quote that says, I could not have been happier with my investment in this event, whew, that is, you know, it's like any testimonial, always the best. Sponsorship levels and details, of course, are in there. You can have a thank you to past sponsors and for their support. That will just show potential new sponsors who in the past has been a sponsor. And then the back cover is always a save the date. I like to do that because it also has the contact information on it. Please make sure we don't forget to put the contact information that all would be terrible. Now I'm going to show you one of my favorite sponsored decks. It has most of these pieces into these elements, not all of it. And if you wanna see more, just email me. All right, so this is the cover. This was the save the date. It's not like I went to some extreme effort to make something gorgeous. It was a save the date. Use what you got. Then these were the next two pages. On the left, the next page, it tells about the uh, autism, obviously something that's near and dear to almost all of us. We all know what's going on with that. And then it talks about their mission and it tells something about the fundraiser. There's no guesswork for these sponsor potential sponsors. It's all there. Then I love it. Look at those happy pictures and pictures are important. Pictures psychologically stop people from just skimming over things and it makes them pay attention and grabs their attention. Plus, look at the beautiful graphics on this. I love that I'm a skimmer, I'm really busy, so I just skim things. I love that they highlighted the actual phrases in each quote so I don't have to dig to figure out what this happy person's saying. It's right there. And I also love those big chunky quotes that uh, the graphic artist put in. This can be done on Canva. You can do this. This would be just literally like an eight and a half by 11 page. Some of my clients do presentation, which is a 16 to nine ratio, but you choose the size you want and then you create it. These are the next two pages. On the left-hand side, this was, like I said, I live in Malibu and Los Angeles, Beverly Hills. There's lots of celebrities at events. The sponsors want to know that celebrities are there in this case because they want the celebrity media that covers it. So that's why we have the media list on the left. If you don't have celebrities, do not worry because that's really not important, honestly. they. They never bring in money, I'll be honest. Most celebrities don't donate almost anything. I would put my biggest supporters' pictures and board members' pictures there. Why? Of course, from the event, from past events, because most likely it is the board members and past supporters who are giving your the names of potential sponsors. So if their pictures are there, if somebody's leafing through that and they see someone they recognize, that has more impact than seeing some celebrity you don't know. Now on the right-hand side, another thing I talked about that I love is those quotes from happy past sponsors. And use logos because for people who skim like me, who don't read every word, it's easy for me to see the, the logos of who those sponsors were and it registers immediately. Wow. Westlake Magazine, and wow, Compass Real Estate. It's impressive, and once again, I love that we pulled out just those two words on the left-hand side, those little phrases, to make sure that it's easy to figure out why they were so happy. Now this is the next, these are the sponsor levels. 
This once again is, it, you can get this sample to see what the sponsorship levels were here. Very popular sponsorship levels. You can see all the goodies that we provided. And then the back is just another version of the save the date and we do have the, the contact information. So that is an irresistible sponsorship deck. It looks slick, even though you know it really cost you $0 because you use Canva and you used your save the dates in those graphics. So it's really easy to put together. And it says this event is going to have a professional level flair. This event will treat its sponsors well because look at how happy the other sponsors were. Now, Lori, this is one of your slides. So I'm going to let you take it from here. Sure. Thanks to AJ. So prior to your event, you want to have an online presence. That's super important. And at Octria, we know you want to shine the spotlight on these sponsors before, during, and after the fundraising event, like AJ was talking about. When you use the Octria program to manage the auction, it includes the dedicated website. And on that dedicated website, you can sell your tickets and your auction catalog and all the typical things. But the most relevant part to this discussion is that you can have a sponsorship element unit directly on that website. So this is how that looks inside the Octria program from an internal admin page for the website editor. There's predefined element blocks. So kind of like with Canva, you can do it automatically online. Same thing with Octria. You just literally drag and drop those onto the page. So I just, Lori, let me ask you this. So yes, you can make a website for your event on Octria? Yeah, it's dedicated. It's with your license. Oh, wow. Take note, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. Well, one of the best parts, I like everything. <laughs> so, oops, why is my, uh, yeah, uh, can you thank you, there you are. thank you. So after you click drag and drop, this isn't so uh, special looking, the most important is that you can add a condition. So after you drag and drop, you can figure it however you want. And it really does take more time to explain this and actually place the sponsor catalog or element on the website. And you can spice this up with a really nice text header above and thanking the sponsors for their generous contributions. Can you advance me, AJ, thanks. Yeah, I, I may. Thank you. Um, so how does this translate to the online dedicated website? So this is an example of a sponsor row. And that's literally just a row across of sponsors where you want to call special attention to the premium sponsors. Um, you can filter by sponsor type. And you can have these shown on every single page of the website. You can add them to the header. You can add them to the footer. Um, you can have more than one row if necessary, even though it's called a row. Um, or you can cycle them through a carousel and that movement really brings attention to them also. Those are easily configurable. And to the next page, this shows you what a sponsor catalog, can you, I'm sorry. I am, I'm trying, I don't know no, I know I'm, and mine just didn't do it, hold on. So no let's, uh, let's see where this little sucker is. Okay, okay. here we are. There we are. Awesome. Thank you. So this is a basic example of what a sponsor catalog looks like. So the other one was a row and it just pulled out the really high premium ones. Um, this is what a sponsor catalog would look like. And the sponsors are all in a single block. And this would be used for the more common level ones. Same thing, multitude of configuration options based on type, amount donated, image display size. And I know I sound like a broken record, but Octria really does make it easy to run your fundraising event. I'm all for easy. Okay. <laughs> so just somebody, uh, Desiree asked a question. She said, what's my opinion on the sponsor on sponsorship levels? Others have suggested that this is old fashioned. Desiree, sponsorship levels are a way for us to delineate the level of investment for each of the sponsors. Sponsorship levels, I have never seen it where you don't offer them something and outline what you're giving them. That's what all sponsorship levels are. You can choose what they are, but really you want to make it um, something they're excited about because you think that they're going to really feel like their logo is going to get a lot of uh, views and access and a lot of legs in marketing term. So old fashioned would be that first one I showed you that just had like three things that said table for four, your logo on the digital loop, that's old fashioned. The really sexy, fun, interesting things that you're gonna see in the sponsorship levels that are on that other slide, those are not old fashioned. Those are what we, <laughs> we call real sales tools. So that's why we do it, but that's a really good question. Now I know all of you love this topic, which is prospecting and outreach, which means how the heck do we find new sponsors? And uh, 
you know, how do I even talk to them? Because it is intimidating and you're thinking, I hate to ask for money. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you're really good nonprofit people and you realize you're not asking for money. You're offering an opportunity. And you can write that down, what I just said. Just like with cultivating donors, just like when we ask for money, when you give the sponsors, when you're talking to sponsors, you are not asking them to give you money ever. You are offering them an opportunity. And that is the key to understanding the difference and making yourself feel comfortable with what you're doing. So there are just a sales. This is just sales 101 here. There are three types of prospects. A hot prospect is somebody who has already sponsored. Hopefully you did a great job of treating them well and they should be a sponsor again. That's what's known as a hot prospect. A warm prospect is someone, hey, they haven't sponsored, but they should. So who would that be? That could be board and committee member contacts. So your board members and your committee members may work for a company that you think, you know what? They should be a sponsor. They have people that they do business with. If you have a big board member and he banks somebody somewhere and he's got a huge bank account with them, they should be a sponsor because they want to make him happy, right? You'd be surprised when you start brainstorming with your committee and board members. Um, you'd be surprised what kind of potential prospects they can bring in. Businesses where you spend money are warm prospects. If you have a dog rescue and you spend tens of thousands of dollars a year on dog food, the place you buy it from should be asked to be a sponsor. If you have a facility and you're a YMCA, we have that here in the United States, you know, you're a social club and you spend a ton of money on janitorial supplies, the janitorial comp company should be asked to be a sponsor. If any place, if you have a huge amount of insurance that you pay, that insurance company should be asked to be a sponsor. Think like a business people. Who do we spend money with? They should be asked to be a sponsor. And companies that want your business. Sometimes we've had um, companies that want to come and do insurance work for a large nonprofit. If I know that they've been bidding on something, I actually go and I will offer them a sponsorship and let them know this is a great way to show your support for the business that you want their business from, right? So that's a great way. Now, a cool prospect is cold calling, basically. And that means you go online and you see what businesses are supporting events in your area that are similar to your organization. And then you make a cool prospect list. They are most likely not going to say yes. One of the reasons that I do cool prospect research is because it gives my brain a tickle about people that are, excuse me, companies that I should be asking. It may not be the same bank, but it reminds me, you know what? I should be asking another bank as well, or I know a bank that does this, or lawyers. This lawyer has made a ton of money off this organization. I remember that a cool prospect you know, supported another event, I'm going to ask our attorney to support this event. If you spend money with somebody in a decent amount, then they should be asked to be a sponsor. Now, I have to say that you can't just go out and ask. We spend a lot of time just making a list, and I put a list. Literally, I write hot prospects, and their names are there, and the cold prospects, and then the media, hot, warm prospects. You need to ask them right. You only get one chance to ask them. So the first thing you need to do is figure out who has the closest relationship with the person. So if it is an insurance company and you have one person in your office who writes a check to the insurance company and calls them when you have issues, that's the person who should call, pick up the phone and use the right words, okay? So the person who is the closest or has a relationship, if it's a board member, and he wants you to go and ask a bank to be a sponsor, the board member should make the first touch. And this is what they should say something like. They should say, hello, Jack Jones, this is Bob Smith. And I want to let you know, I'm on the board of this great organization and it has been a real light in my life. And I'm very passionate about this. I'm going to be having the executive director call you because they have an event that is an amazing opportunity for you to be a sponsor because the demographic who's there are the same people that you want to be at your bank making deposits. So look for a call from AJ Steinberg because she's great and she will off tell you about the opportunity. 
that's the kind of phone call and then they don't have to do anything else that's board members hate to work hard am i right you can definitely shake your head up and down they just don't like to work that hard tell them if they make one call you will follow up and do the rest that one call will open doors for you like crazy then if it's a warm prospect and not a hot prospect, identify the proper person to talk to at the company. Now, how would you do that? You can use the AJ method, which is if there's somebody, there's a warm prospect, and I don't know who would be the decision maker there, I call and I talk to usually whoever picks up the phone or the receptionist or an assistant, and I say, listen, I want to know who the right person is to talk to, and I'm hoping you can help me. When you ask someone to help you, psychologically, they are 100 million times more likely to help you. That is just like human nature. They want to help. I'm hoping you can help me. I need to know the person to talk to about an opportunity for a sponsorship for an event that is really a great marketing opportunity. Who would be the person in your company who would do that? And they'll say, well, here, this is the person. And then you move on from there. If you are not comfortable like me, I can talk forever because this is what I do for a living is I talk to wonderful people like you. But a lot of people don't feel comfortable just off the cuff, spontaneously speaking. And that's a case, put together your solicitation pitch with bullet points so that you can talk to that person while looking at a piece of paper if they're talking on the phone and you can go down the bullet points so you don't miss anything and customize that solicitation script to reflect each prospect. If it's a bank saying, we know that this is a perfect demographic for people who you want to see be depositors in your bank. Or if it's a car company, we know that this is a perfect demographic for people who would be driving your automobile. Customize it as much as possible. All right, so that's the prospecting and that's the outreach. Now, the important thing is once you've made your prospects and you've got this gorgeous, beautiful deck and you send it to them and they're like, heck yeah, sign me up. You need to treat those sponsors who have signed on like they are kings and queens. And this is the most important thing. And it is so overlooked. And I, I just shake your head up and down, not that I can see you from here, but shake your head up and down if you have ever forgotten something you promised a sponsor. Most of you are probably shaking your head up and down and weeping in your tea at the same time because it feels awful. We love our sponsors. We don't want to do that. So these are the four things you need to keep doing. And I will go through each of these in the next slide. You need to follow through on what you promised. You need to keep them in the loop during the planning phrase and keep them excited about your event. You need to overproduce. You need to go way beyond the expectations of what you promised them and keep promoting them as sponsors after the event is done. So let's go through each of these just really quickly. Following through on what you promised. It's hard. It gets to a point as an event producer like me that I can't remember all the details of any event, especially when I've got 10 events and 10 galas going on at the same time. So I need to keep a spreadsheet of each sponsor level. And then when I sign a sponsor on, I put their name on it and I put what special perks they get. And it's like a list and I check off those perks as I complete them to make sure that they're getting what I promise. That is the only way that I personally can keep track of that. Triple check that you are not forgetting a sponsor's logo on the step and repeat that is supposed to be there. Now, I don't know what they call it way on the other side of the world, but a step and repeat here is, it's just a big banner that's about 10 feet wide by 10 feet high and people stand in front of it. It has all the sponsor logos and your event logo and your organization logo and that's where people take a media wall. Georgie calls it a media wall. It's a media wall. It's basically there to take pictures of celebrities, VIPs, guests, board members so that afterwards we have all these pictures that are either in the media or we post on social media and it is so important if one of your sponsorship perks is to have their logo on that media wall, the step and repeat. Hey, Georgie from Australia, now we know what they call it in Australia. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is make sure it's on there. And just last year, I was not in charge of this, but the person in charge of it did, he forgot a very important logo on there and it broke my heart. And I, 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 I just, they won't ever be a sponsor again. It wasn't something I did. I would have had my little checkoff boxes, but he did. 
Also, the tribute books is also called an event program. Those are those pretty colored books that say what's going to happen during the evening. There is those tribute ads in them. It has a little bit about your organization. Make sure the logos and the ads that are promised to your sponsors are in that book that you didn't forget something. Secondly, keep them in the loop and excited. This is the one thing that I don't know why nobody does. It is so common to just sign them, take their money, and then they don't hear from you until they show up at the event. That is a no-no. We want them to stay excited, to stay in the loop, ask their opinion, say, listen, we were thinking of, you know, having this entertainment and something like this. You know, what do you think? Get them to be involved because that keeps them excited. And excitement is something that makes them have a relationship with your event. And your enthusiasm when you call them and say, oh, you can't believe the band we just booked. It's going to be off the chart fun for the after party. Your enthusiasm boosts their expectations of how great this event slash investment is for their company. Also, if it sounds awesome, they're more likely to come and bring their colleagues at the higher levels who can become supporters and sponsors later on. And once again, anytime you keep them in the loop, you thank them. Appreciation is one of the most important portions of any events planner's job is to let people know we appreciate them being volunteers, being event committee members, being staff members, and also sponsors. Next is going beyond expectations. If I say I'm going to give you a wine and here's a special wine, I give them a wine that's twice as good. Sets you apart. If you go beyond expectations, if you say your, your logo will be on the digital sponsor loop during dinner, have their logo on posters throughout the cocktail area. If they sit down at their table, and I do this all the time, and if you ask me, because I won't remember this, I will send you one of my napkin insert that has the logo of the sponsor on it that says, we'd like to thank the sponsor for sponsoring this table. And their table has personalized napkin inserts served, uh, slid into each of the napkins. It's something they don't expect, and it sets me apart because they're like, what attention to detail. This person appreciates our investment in their event. And one thing to remember is don't say, hey, you know, we're doing such great work. You know, I'm so glad you invested our event. Keep it donor centric, meaning we can't do this without you. Super important. We can't do it without our supporters and without. Oh, so Desiree asked about an affordable way to create a step and repeat or a media wall. I go online. The media walls are usually around $400 US dollars. And I go to www. For us, it's like lasteppandrepeat.com or steppandrepeat.com. They're all about the same. They all create the media wall. You send them your logos and they make those gorgeous options. I have to say you want to do something locally. So make sure that you go online and Google local step and repeat places. Um, there is no affordable way in terms of it's $400 US. You can't kind of get around that. I use rental pipe and base, which is cheap to hang it from. But the only way that you can get around having to recreate it each time is if you only have your organization's logo. If you have the same logo for each event, you can do that. It loses the impact because when you have sponsors logos on it, it's such an enticement for them to invest in your event. So it's 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 worth it to invest the money in that media wall, that step and repeat to do it. So Desiree, I just go online like like regular normal people and I find that that's the most effective. But then again, also, I'm really nice to people. So afterwards, I always thank them. I send them pictures of the step and repeat. And then I say, I have all these pictures. Next time, do you think you can give me a discount? And they usually give me a discount because I'm a nonprofit and I'm nice. So there you go. All right. Then after the event, keep promoting them. Don't just stop mentoring your sponsors because your event is over. Just included the 800. <laughs> that's right. Just put that into your budget. Yay. That's what you call proactive. We love it. All right, you guys. So promoting them after the event is done. Do not go and thank your guests and send all the pictures of your guests having fun and eating appetizers and dancing the after party. Don't do that. Make sure that you consistently have the logos of the sponsors after it. It could be three months afterwards. Make sure that you keep promoting those sponsors and saying how much you love them and you can't do it without them. They love that. You can do it in social media. You can do it in email blasts. You can do it on a website, once again, anything that you can do. And then also, 
this is something, you know, there are certain people who just call you when they want to borrow your truck because they have to move their furniture. You know, those people, you never hear from them unless they need something from you. Do not be that person to sponsors because if you only call them and talk to them every nine months when you're hitting them up again for a sponsorship, you are that person who's only borrowing the truck and never being a friend. Don't do that. Stay in touch with sponsors throughout the year. Keep them apprised of what the money that they have invested in your event has allowed you to do with your mission. Let them know because of you, we've built 25 new kennels for senior dogs who are coming to live at our facility. Because of you, we've given a school to another village in Kenya. Whatever you're doing, let them know it and let it be donor centric with their thing. And then Offer them a chance for next year's sponsorship while they're still totally in love with you. When the glow of the event is happening and the, um, they, oh, this is what I want to say. Sorry, I have so many things I want to say. <laughs> and and we're, we're getting, to, I'm sorry, and we're really running late. So um, one of the things is that booklet I talked about, the tribute booklet, that is beautiful. It has all the sponsors in it. It has the logos, the ads in it. It has this uh, the mission statement about your, your, uh, your organization, I print extras, or actually I don't. What I do is all those ones that are left on the seat that are so frustrating after any event, I pick them up and when I go back to the office, I actually have my clients send that sponsor book to the sponsor via email with a handwritten thank you note saying, please look at page 17, your ad is there and I just wanna thank you again and take a look at what a beautiful event the whole event was such a strong marketing piece for them to become a sponsor again. Then if you're really smart, you'll send it digitally to all the sponsors as well, because then they can look at it and forward it to their bosses or their colleagues to show them how well they were represented in your tribute book. Now, I'm just gonna say one more thing. I know I'm throwing so much to you guys, but it's so juicy. There is something called Flip Snack, and I talked about this in my last uh, free webinar here, is Flip Snack is www.flipsnack, F-L-I-P-S-N-A-C-K.com. That is a site where you can upload a PDF of your tribute book or your even your um, sponsor deck, and it will turn it into one of those digital beautiful flip books that when you click on it, it actually looks like the pages are turning. It physically looks like a book that's turning its pages online and you can send that. Flip Snack is what I use to turn my auction catalogs into beautiful flip books that I send, beautiful digital books that I send out before the event. I send my tribute books out afterwards to the guests and the sponsors in a flip book. It's a great way to take something you've already made and make it look super beautiful. All right, so lastly, we're gonna talk about how to keep the love flowing, how to take all that wonderful feel good stuff that we've done for the past nine months putting on an event, because I always say it takes nine months to make a baby and it takes nine months to make an event. So all that love and all that investment we have, let's keep the love flowing. Okay, and this is one of the main mistakes that organizations make. So have a post event protocol in place even before the event happens. Have it written down about how over the next nine months to a year, you are going to be keeping in touch with these sponsors. How often will you reach out to them? Will you be sending them articles? If you know that one of the sponsors, the guy who you were dealing with, he has golden retrievers and loves them. If you see an article about golden retrievers, for goodness sakes, forward it to him, right? So have a protocol of things you must do, meaning let them know what their money's done throughout the year, and also, if it's personal, let them know. Okay, now Jen, who is now my hero, says she delivers Christmas and Easter baking to her sponsors. See, she totally gets it. She is not borrowing the truck just when she needs to move her furniture. So the next thing is send photos of sponsor logos that happened at the event. If you had a big ice luge, which is basically a big ice sculpture that you pour the, the alcohol in and it swirls down and it comes out cold and frosty into a martini cup. If the sponsor's logo was on that and it was gorgeous, send them a picture of it, frame it and send a picture of it. If they had napkins in the cocktail area with their logo on it, take a pretty picture of the napkin and send it so they can see their sponsorship dollars in action. And then phone calls and letters and obviously baked goods are really important. 
So make sure that if you have a $20,000 sponsor, a phone call and definitely now baked goods are definitely in order. And those letters are just as important. And as I said, keep in touch throughout the year because that's what's really going to make you irresistible to sponsors. So, whew. I made it. That's it. So for you guys today, the takeaways are, this is what I want you to walk away and say, okay, she threw so much at us. We're going to email her at AJ at Queen Bee Fundraising and get all those beautiful samples so we can have them. But I want you to remember that sponsorship dollars are marketing dollars. You need to think like the person you're talking to. If you go to Norway and you start speaking English to somebody standing on the corner, they're just going to stare at you. But if you speak Norwegian to them, they will point you to the place you need to go and you will get what you want. So speak their language. High quality sponsorship decks reflect the quality of your event. Make sure that if you're having, that you want it to give them confidence that you know how to do something well. Always overperform on your promises to all your sponsors and maintain that meaningful relationship after the event is over. All right, you guys, you are awesome. Now go out there, get those sponsorships. And if you succeed or you have questions or want my templates, there you go, aj at queenbeefundraising.com. And here's a whole bunch of resources. I'm going to let Lori take it from here. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for spending this hour with me. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day, evening, week, and the rest of the month. Heck, Thanks, year. AJ. <laughs> Thanks, AJ. There's no reason to jot these down. This, these will come out on the link afterwards with the resources, which will be just a quick link. And that does have your the sponsorship decks that AJ was talking about also for those. Um, so stay in touch with us. Both AJ and Octria are on social media. 